The first major change here is with home screen customization. Press and hold any empty space on the home screen, go into edit, customize, and now you get the options. You can have these dark icons or choose brighter ones. When you choose dark, it kind of dims the background too. You can also leave it on automatic. Here's my favorite. You can choose to go with tint. This basically removes all color from the icons and lets you add your own, which means I can go for this nothing-esque monochrome icon look, which I really like. Now it's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. I mean, not better than nothing, nothing. You get what I mean. Anyways, if this is your first time here, or in case you just can't remember, my name's Ash, you're watching C4E Tech, and let's continue. Now, if you wanna make things cleaner, you choose large icons. And this removes all text from underneath and gives you bigger icons. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna love this, but I am gonna leave it on small for the moment at least. You can also choose to adjust the wallpaper dimming by yourself if you want. Now, my absolute favorite change with iOS 18, this is something Android's always had. You get to leave apps wherever you want them to be, as in there can be space. To me, the traditional iOS way of doing things was fine when phones were three and a half, four inches. But ever since the iPhone 6 was launched 10 freaking years back, this is something I have been wanting. Because when you're holding your phone like this, it's easier to hit apps in this area, right? Now, the way things used to be, that's always been a turn off for me whenever I switch to an iPhone. And I'm glad we can do this now. It's pretty cool. Now with widgets, if you wanna change the size, once again, you can do it the Android way. Just hold and then drag. You don't need to kill the widget and bring it back anymore. And while we're on the home screen, here's another cool thing. You can now lock individual apps. For example, say I don't want anyone using my browser, I can just long press on it, add require face ID, and tap require face ID. Now, every time I open the browser, it says face ID required. And only when I scan does it open up. Now, alternatively, you can go ahead and hide the app. So you can select require face ID and then choose hide and require face ID, hide app. So now the app will not be on your home screen, but instead over here under hidden. So if you wanna lock away multiple apps, you can do it this way. Moving on with certain apps, when they're on the home screen, you can just tap and hold and then convert it to a widget. See it here. Now, if you don't want it to be a widget anymore and want it to become an icon, you can just go ahead, long press and turn it back. You can also choose different sizes the same way. And as I mentioned earlier, we can long press, choose edit, and then drag the widget to extend or shrink it. Note that this way, you can't really shrink it back into an icon. For that, you're gonna have to tap and hold and then choose icon. And there you go. Nice, right? Another thing you can do is go into fonts, system fonts. And here are a lot of fonts to change up the way your device looks. So more customization options. Okay, let's now move away from the home screen and get to the control center. This though it looks familiar to begin with, it's also been revamped. Now there are toggles for extra pages here that you can jump to. If you press on the plus to the top, the layout becomes editable. So you can reorder everything. And just as with widgets on the home screen, you can pull to resize the toggles here. You can also tap and hold and move to a different page to drop the toggle there. So once again, with the control center, Apple's going for more user customization. And also this, if you press and hold this power icon, it takes you to the slide to power off screen. I'd still rather have the actual power button do its power control thing, but eh, it does Siri now. Now also in the control center, we can add new controls, tap the plus icon and select add a control. Apple says more third party options will be showing up here going forwards, but even now there are a substantial number of choices. And here's another cool thing. Tap on the flashlight toggle. The flashlight animation, it's a little more complex. Not only do you get to control the intensity, but you can also control how narrow or spread out the beam is. Just look closely at the beam spread. You can just narrow the beam, or you see the beam spread out. Narrow, spread, narrow, spread. So you can narrow and increase the intensity, or you can spread it. With the lock screen, you get your regular swipe between the different styles, depth effect and all that. But this time, most importantly, you can go ahead and change the quick launch shortcuts. For example, here I can add the flashlight or here I have a translator right now. I can switch it to pretty much anything I want. Go back to the camera, whatever I find convenient. So I'm gonna leave it on translate because hey, I'm in China right now and that's something I find useful. iOS 18 also brings with it some new wallpapers. So these are what you get. 
nothing great, but hey, it's new. The Photos app has also gotten a facelift. You can select stuff as always, but now you can also search from here, Shayang in the fall, and it gives me Shayang the last time I was here. You can also choose what collections you see, like here I can replace featured memories with something else, and there's a lot of small little things like this that they've added. Now, when you are in a particular picture, go into settings, you go into crop, and when you choose an aspect ratio, the cropping, it gets locked to set aspect ratio. You can unlock it by tapping the lock icon and then freeform crop if you want to. Next is the messages app. Finally, there is RCS support. Yeah, that's done. And when typing, you get this, multiple animation types, small, nod, shake, and then you also have things like italics, bold, you can underline, you can strike through, you can combine them all. There are eight animations for you to use. Additionally, another thing Apple's added is the send later option. So you can schedule messages up to two weeks in advance. So if there is say an anniversary, a birthday or something like that, you can schedule it beforehand and not miss it. All right, moving on, there's also a new app for passwords. It's got all your pass keys, codes, Wi-Fi sign-ons, everything Apple's been collecting so far but this is just an easy way to access it as an app. And you can also create a group and share it with family if need be. One thing to note about this, it only uses face unlock, so you can't really have a password for your passwords app. Now, given all the games Apple's been focusing on porting over to iOS, it makes sense that gaming gets some attention too. On iOS 18, when you launch a game, you see this, a game mode on notification. What it means is iOS is now prioritizing the game over everything else that's running. If you don't want that, you can just pull down the notification bar and turn it off. Simple, right? Next up, from settings, you can go into accessibility and select music haptics. This, as of now, only works with Apple Music. It gives you haptic feedback in line with the music playing, kind of similar to what we've seen on Sony phones. Now, here's another feature I found very interesting. So, when you go in here, okay, before that, another thing worth noting, the settings menu, if you notice, it's a lot cleaner. That's cause apps are now tucked away inside a single menu. So you don't need to scroll through a lot. But anyways, what I wanted to talk about is this camera, record sound, and you can select a lot audio playback. So basically what happens now is if you're gonna go in and record a video while you're also playing some music, it's not gonna mute the track. See. And this is the playback. Also, under the battery submenu in settings, Apple now provides us an option to set a charging limit. So if you want, you can make sure the battery maxes out at 80% in the interest of battery health, but do know that only when you set it to 100 can you enable optimized battery charging. So what else? Uh, there are also extra actions available for the action button. So these are things we've seen already, but now you can recognize music because Shazam, Apple bought it. You can use it for translate, the magnifier, and you can select all the controls you have like here, I have it set to quickly launch the stopwatch. And did you notice how when you press any of the buttons, there's a visual bump on screen? That's part of the animation changes that come with iOS 18. There's a lot of this, even in some apps like the swipe away animation on Safari tabs, that's fresh. And finally, there is bilingual keyboards. Go into keyboards, choose to add a new keyboard, and you can add extra languages to it. So now English, and there you go, Arabic. And back to English, that's how it works. You can also long press and choose or jump into the keyboard settings to change stuff. So guys, these are some of the most interesting iOS 18 features. The beta is now out to public. So what do you guys think about this? Personally, as an Android user who has to test iPhones for about two months a year, I'm happy. What about you? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Ash, out.